Genesis chapter number three. And boy, I tell you what, we got a lot to cover tonight, man. And I'm, as usual, I'm so excited. Uh, I'm excited about what God is about to do with this church. Amen. Amen. Yes. I kid you not. I'm excited about what God is about to do. I'm excited about what God is about to do in your life. Amen. Because when it is that God does uh, special things in your life, now uh, it becomes, uh, you look at me a lot different. Amen. Because it's, it, 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 you, you look at the word here. You know what? Amen. That word is actually working in my yes. life. You know, it, 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 it pays. It, I, I didn't like it on the front end, and I didn't like it. It, it. it made me adjust some things, and it busted up some stuff that I was comfortable with. But I'm so glad, and I thank God for my minister, because he helped God work with him to bring me out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. 
verse 11. And he said, who told you that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree? Well, well, I commanded you that you should not eat. Who told you you were naked? Mm -hmm. Who told you you couldn't make it? Mm -hmm. who, who, who told you, 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 you nobody is never going to love you? Mm -hmm. who, 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 who told you that they made you have that self-esteem? Mm -hmm. who, 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 who told you that you had to stay on EV? Section A. Who, who, who told you that you always had to live with check to check week to week? Who told you you couldn't start the business that you wanted to? Who told you that? Mm -hmm. See, Look God didn't tell you that. Amen. Yeah. Satan tells you yeah. what it is that you right. can't do when you're trying to move forward. Yeah. Watch this here. So then he says in verse number 12, and the man said, Watch what the man said. And the man said, the man, the man, the man. You know, I'm talking about the leader. Uh -huh. the, the one that got created first. Uh -huh. The one that God expected to be the husband, the house band, to keep the house together. Uh -huh. the, the one that's supposed to pay the bills. Uh -huh. The one that's supposed to be looking out for everybody. The one that's supposed to make mama, mama comfortable. Uh -huh. The one that's supposed to be protective, protective, the provider. You're telling me. This man right here, what does he say, Dash? He says what? And the man said, The woman who thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Now watch, 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 watch. Here it is, the man. The man. The same man that praised God over in uh, verse number 23 of chapter 2. This is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called more man because she came out of man. He was praising God. And watch this here. A couple of verse later, now he's blaming the woman. Uh -huh. Oh, boy, that verse. I don't know y'all read it. Uh -huh. he, he, he was praising God. It's a few verses earlier. Uh -huh. But now, because something has gone wrong in the house, now he blames his wife. How many times do we as men? It's her fault. Yeah. Her fault. Watch this here. Did you not know most of the stuff that goes on in the house? I hate to say it. Well, I don't hate to say it. Uh, because it needs to challenge us. Did you know men is our fault? Amen. <laughs> did, 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 did you know that? Did, 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 did you know if it is that, that, that my wife is not happy, it's my fault. Amen. Did, 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 did you know that if it is that we're struggling in the house, it's my fault. Amen. If the bills are not paid, if, if the stuff is not taken care of, the car is not running, it's my fault. Amen. See, we like to blame and we put the blame on Watch this here. Um, I see a lot of men sorry me and them. They are now blaming women. But if it is women, how are you going to blame a woman if y'all struggling? Mm -hmm. How is that our fault? Mm -hmm. Adam was born and made and created before Eve. Mm -hmm. Adam had the covenant and the, and the streams of income and the house out east and Eden and all that. He had all and then he came and that and watch this here. So now the very woman that you were celebrating, mm -hmm. now you were blaming. Mm -hmm. That one mistake that Adam made that I shared with you last week. Adam, he praised God for Eve, mm -hmm. but he never prayed about her. Amen. Amen. See, a lot of times we're so happy to connect with someone. Amen. That's how we get trapped up and going down the wrong road because we're so emotional and we're so caught up and we're so happy now that we're not alone. But, but, but the thing about that is, uh, uh, sometimes if you look up with the wrong person, you can still be alone. Amen. 
So, 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 so watch verse number 12 one more time. And the man said, The woman, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me. Now watch this here. Look how not only the first person that he blamed, Patrick, is God. Mm -hmm. Now watch it. Now watch what he did, how he did it, brother woman. He sick played God. Mm -hmm. He tried to play God, but he didn't want to directly come out. He he just said, the woman you gave me. So wait a minute, why is it? Psychologically, uh, he's blaming God. But that's how really that we do too. Mm -hmm. We're the one who sinned. We are the one who made the choice. Remember, Adam didn't have to do that. He made his own choice. Mm -hmm. So why didn't he stand up like a man and say, you know what, baby? I'm no good. God, I do that. Mm -hmm. You told me. Now watch this here. God is actually giving Adam time to repent. Amen. When God asks you a question, he's trying to get you to think. God already knows what the answer is. Amen. God knows the end from the beginning. Do you think God don't know where they was at? Do you, don't think, you don't think that God knows? He says, he said, did you eat them? And the man said, the woman you gave me, God, to be with me. She gave me. Look how weak he sounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's how weak we sound when we, we try to blame other people for the choices that we have. <laughs> she gave me of the tree. And because she gave me this, I ate. <laughs> it's my fault. If she wouldn't have put the candy bar on the on, on the counter, I wouldn't have ate it. <laughs> you know how we blame people for, for, for our downfalls. <laughs> What's this in verse 13? And the Lord God said in verse 13, unto the woman. Now he went to the man. Who did he come to first? The man. Now watch this here. If a problem is going on in the house, who's he coming to first? Amen. He comes to the man first. Amen. Are you studying with your wife? Look at that. See, because a lot of times when stuff is going wrong, the first thing that, we, that, that God is going to ask you, are you studying with your wife? Are you praying with your wife? That's your first order of business. Why aren't you doing that? So you telling me you can go and collect a check and you can go and work and you can go and work on cars all day, but you can't study with your wife? Mm -hmm. And you wonder why things are going on in your house? Mm -hmm. See, I get quiet, right? Yeah. The woman said, what part of the virgin? Maybe we'll get some more emails on this one. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast So he's still giving the woman time to repent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, God has a way. He gives you, watch this, his grace and mercy and his mercy. Sometimes God will allow you space and time so you can come to yourself and repent before he, 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 he pronounces his judgment on you. And God sin is a bloody minute. And God, see, the thing what we don't understand, uh, God will forgive you if it is you repent and you're sincere about it. Yeah. Why is it? It's a bloody image. Sin always carries consequences. Amen. See, if it is we realize what it is that it cost us really, we'll slow up on some sin. Amen. We don't understand what it costs us. We don't understand what it might cost our children. Amen. We don't understand. See, because remember, the next chapter, even next week, Lord be willing, we're going to do who are their kids? Cain and Abel. And they had a few problems in the family, didn't they? Yeah. Why did they have problems? Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. What happened to Cain and Abel? I'll give you the story already. Cain killed his brother, what? Abel. Watch this here. Well, how did that come about? Yeah. And then blood was what? Shed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a blood of business. Wherever that is sin, it's going to have to be blood. Mm -hmm. It's going to be shed. Mm -hmm. So watch this here. Verse, what did I say? Verse 13. Mm -hmm. Lord God said, go ahead, Dad. 
And the Lord God said unto the woman, What, what is this thou hast done? Yeah, and the woman said, The serpent beheld me, and I did eat. So in other words, oh, he said, he asked the woman, so what the woman did? She did the same thing the man did. Mm -hmm. See, watch this here. See, men, uh, our wives are a slight reflection of us. Amen. If your wife acts shaky and sticky, then it's a reflection of you. So then she blamed, but watch this here. At least she didn't blame him. Right. But she blames. But she blamed and on the devil. Mm -hmm. uh, the devil made me do it. Flip Wilson. Uh, the devil made me do it. Mm -hmm. The serpent, he tricked me. And I did. I did it. Verse 14. The Lord God said unto the serpent, mm -hmm. Because thou hast done this, watch this here, there's consequences. Mm -hmm. Because thou hast done this. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm happy to know, watch this here. Now, who is the serpent? Mm -hmm. Come on now, class. Very good. AKA Lucifer. Mm -hmm. AKA the serpent. A.K.A. Abaddon, A.K.A. Abaddon, that word means destroyer. Mm -hmm. See, Satan's mission is to kill, steal, and destroy. And he's not going to come and announce himself as Satan. You have to have enough goggles with this word to recognize Satan trying to come in your life. Amen. How do you know Satan's coming in your life if you don't study your word? Amen. You won't know because you're going to go on your feelings on what you see and what you hear. Why? Because you're hungry and you're thirsty for something. And when God, when the devil knows you're hungry and thirsty, he always can provide a glass of water and a nice juicy burger. Why? Because he knows when you're hungry and thirsty. You can't tip a person who's not hungry and thirsty in an area. Amen. If I just hate, you can't tip me for food. Amen. You can try something else, but you can't tip me for that. Amen. So you have to be hungry in an area. Amen. And he knows, watch this here, he knows each one of our hearts. He knows. Amen. He knows yeah. where your kryptonite is. Yeah. He knows what you like. He knows how you like it. He knows. And you know what? The thing about Satan, but the thing about the word, Jesus never condemned the sinners, the prostitutes, the wine dealers, uh, the, the, he never condemned necessarily them. Mm -hmm. He never called them children of the devil. Mm -hmm. You know who we call children of the devil? Pharisees, mm -hmm. the people that were those, aka the church folk, mm -hmm. the people that were self-righteous. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. John 8 and 44, real quick. John 8 and 44. Let me tie this together real quick. Watch me connect these dots. John 8 and 44. You know, in every uh, war, there's something called reconnaissance. There's something that's called, uh, what do they call that when you scope out the enemy? Intelligence. Mm -hmm. You do homework on the enemy. You do, you do, you, you, you survey. You go and see where the enemy's strengths and the enemy's weaknesses are. And the thing of it is, we have a life, been given a life and a soul, but yet sometimes we don't do the reconnaissance. We don't do the intelligence and the background on the enemy that's trying to take and steal, kill, and destroy our lives. Mm -hmm. And it's a war going on. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, church. Do you think Satan is playing with you? No, no, no. no. Satan is trying to destroy your sister. He wants your sister and your brother to be homosexuals. 
He wants them to think that they can go both ways and still serve God. He wants people, and look here, Satan is a deceiver. Yeah. And he's trying to destroy, he wants to, he wants to destroy your, your children. Amen. Watch this here, John 8, and, and, and watch verse number, in fact, go to verse number 40 to get the context. The Bible says, here the, Jesus was confronted, confronting the, the Pharisees. And whatever it is that you tell church people, watch this here, a church folk, when you tell church folk, not Christians, when you tell church folk the truth, the Bible says in verse 40, but now you seek to kill me. <laughs> he ain't gonna like it, watch it here. Is that in your Bible? Amen. Why are they seeking to kill Jesus now? Because a man who told you the truth, which I have heard of God, and this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father, they said to him. We be not born of fornication and have one father. And remember, Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. Amen. And they were trying to twist that around. See, people don't have the facts. They always try to twist them around. Amen. Watch this here. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. Amen. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I myself, but he that sent me. So in verse 43, he said, What the heck? Why do ye not understand my speech? Why? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Uh huh. Ye are of your father the devil. Now watch his ear. Listen, you are your father the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. Read. He was a murderer from the beginning. From the beginning. And abode not in the truth. Because? Because there is no truth in him. When? When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own. And the father of? For he is a liar and the father of it. And verse 45 says what? And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. So watch his ear. He says, uh, you are your father, the devil. So watch this. I'm, 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 I'm picking up on something because we're fixing to go into the seed. Mm -hmm. Look at that. You are either a seed of God or your seed of Satan. Mm -hmm. There right. is no middle ground. Mm -hmm. If you're not a, 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 a seed, if, if, if God is not your father, mm -hmm. if God is not your daddy, Satan automatically, by default, becomes your daddy. You can't have two daddies. Right. Watch his ear. So then he says, he says, uh, verse 46, go ahead, Dash. Which of you convinced me of sin? Yeah. And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He says, if I tell you the truth, why you don't believe me? Why people don't want to believe the truth? <laughs> why would it well, why would it be tell them and you love them and, and, and look here, you come to them and tell them and say, hey man, listen, man, you need to And the thing of it is, watch this here, you can sit back and not say nothing to them. They ain't like me, all right. Mm -hmm. But if you go and tell them, listen, man, you really need to repent and get back in fellowship with God. You're out of fellowship, man. Mm -hmm. Man, they won't believe what, see, they don't like, people don't like it. They don't even want to believe when you tell them the truth, but they'll believe a lie. Yeah. You know, this is some radio wrong as to tell them they in the kingdom. But then I just showed you you're not in the kingdom when it is that you need to repent and it is you fought the devil. But then so you listen to some radio and the radio told you you was all right with God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's almost like we talked about last night. It's almost like we like to believe lies. Mm -hmm. Why do we like to believe lies? Mm -hmm. When the truth just set you what? Free. So watch this here. So he says in verse 47, he says, which, go ahead, that. He that is of God, hear God's word. Watch this here. He, he said, he that is of God, hears his word. Mm -hmm. So then when I approve, and we remember here, means approve, I hear the, the, the acoustics of God when I hear his word. But I have to be of God. God has to be my father so I can hear his word. Amen. But if I'm not of God, then I don't hear God's word. But I can hear gossip. I can hear trash. I can hear CNN. I can hear what I only going to see out by how many deaths are going to happen. But I can't believe everlasting life. I can't believe abundant life. I can't believe my head's right and I'm healed. I can't believe that. But I believe CNN. You don't know your daddy mm. when you ain't have a relationship with your daddy. Mm. That's why people are in trouble now. Right. Why the world is in trouble?
dads. Mm-hmm. And then you got dads, but, but they got they don't have the daddy up there. Right. Mm-hmm. Watch this. He that is of God, heareth God's words, and ye therefore hear them not. Why? Mm-hmm. That ain't your dad. Mm-hmm. So watch this. We're talking about seeds. Watch this. We're talking about seeds because now go to Genesis 3 and verse number 15. Watch this. Go back to the text. Because we're about to get into the seed line. It's very, very important. This is a foundational understanding. If you miss this verse number 15, you are not going to understand the whole scheme of the Bible. Watch this here. Watch watch this here in verse number 14. One more time. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto the serpent, What did he say, Dad? Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. Now, now watch the consequences. We're going to deal with the consequences all the way down to verse number probably about like 19. But what I need you to understand is the first curse or the consequence came upon who? Sin. Amen. Ain't that in your Bible? Amen. It says, Thou art work cursed above all cattle. Of every beast of the field, uh-huh. upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And watch what's going on in verse 15. And I will what? Put enmity uh-huh. between thee and the woman, yeah. and between thy seed and her seed. Mm-hmm. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, watch what's going on right here. He says, God says, I will. Who will? I'm going to put enmity. I'm going to put what? Enmity. I'm going to put enmity. Enmity is conflict. Mm-hmm. Enmity is war. Enmity is, 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 is strife. Enmity is, is, is something uh, that two people oppose one another. He says, uh, where am I going to put the enmity? I'm going to put it between thee. He's talking to who? Satan. And the woman. Watch this here. I'm going to put it between the satanic and humanity. Amen. Why, why did he save the woman? Because the woman was the one that he burst of the humanity out of. Everybody came out of Eve. Amen. That's why we need to quit with all this old racism Amen. stuff. Because everybody came out the same mom and dad. Mm-hmm. All of us came out of Eve. Black, white, look at it. They were the first man and the first woman. Amen. Adam and Eve was the first man mm-hmm. and the what? First and the first woman. So watch this here. Read it verse 15 one more time. And I yeah. will put enmity between thee and the woman. Yes. And between thy seed and her seed. Uh, it shall bruise thy head. It shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. Now I'm going to come back and deal with that in just a second. But before we deal with that, I need you to understand something. Satan, remember, was a shining star. Mm-hmm. He was an angel in heaven. He was a shining star, but he wanted to be the director. Uh-huh. <laughs> he was a star. He was truly a star. But he wanted to be the director, and there can only be one director of the movie scene. Yeah. Now watch this here. When it is that we take the seed of Satan, we want to be the director instead uh-huh. of being stars. God made us all to be star. You a star. Watch this here. You a star. You are somebody. God made you to be a star. Amen. But the thing of it is, when you want to be the director of your life instead of being the star of your life and let the director tell you when to go, where to go, who to go get, and, and watch this here. That's when it is that we crash. Amen. Watch this here. Most of us, most of the people, a lot of the people in the church of Christ, have really been practicing Satanism. Mm-hmm. They've been coming to church, but they've been practicing Satanism. When we practice Satanism, you do what you want to do. Amen. You come to church when you want to come to church. Mm-hmm. You do good when you want to do good instead of letting him be the director. Amen. Now watch this here. Go real quick to Revelation 12 and verse number 4. Go to Revelation 12. I hope you're taking notes tonight because all of this, we're going to, we're going to tie it all, all, it all ties together. Revelation chapter number 12. We got to know our enemy. Remember, because sin is a bloody business. And the more sin that the devil can get on you, the more we know God cannot 
bless you. He knows that. But in foundation, see, if we would realize what the devil knows, the devil knows that God will not bless sin. So what is he going to keep you in? Sin. God knows if you won't repent about sin, you cannot have fellowship. See, the Satan knows the word better than we do. Amen. So that's why he can take the word and he knows what God has to operate on the word. Even we don't know that. God has to operate on his word and he knows God has to punish disobedience. Amen. He knows sin is a bloody business. See, the thing about this, somebody might say, well, I believe. Well, but James said, even the devil believes. Amen. It ain't enough to believe. I believe in God. Yeah, the devil does too. Amen. That's why he does what he does because he knows he's trying to get as many people to go to the place he's going. That's why he does what he does. Amen. Revelation chapter number 12. Watch verse number 4. The Bible says what? Dash. And did till through the third part of the stars of heaven. Yeah. And did cast them to the earth. Uh -huh. And the dragon stood before the woman. Which was ready to be delivered. To the what? To the power of her child as soon as it was born. Now, watch this here. Now, the woman, you gotta understand something. The woman here, it has a direct, the reason why I took it here, has a direct connection in typology to the woman. Remember, the woman that was gonna have, remember, he says, I'm gonna put enmity or conflict between you, Satan, and the woman. Because the woman would produce a blood seed line. And then through that seed line, we're going to produce the one that's our Savior. Amen. <laughs> so watch this here. So the Bible says, read it. It says, come on, Dad. And she brought forth the man child. Yes. Who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. Who is that? Jesus. Very good. That's Jesus. So watch, watch what's going to happen. God says, I'm going to put enmity between you, Satan, and the woman. Now, between that enmity, God is going to, God put the enmity. Sometimes God will set the stage up to the impossible just to show you that he's God. Right? Amen. Right? That's how the news right there. Amen. He'll let the stage stack up. He'll let people talk about you like a dog. He'll let people count you out. Oh, he'll, he'll, he'll let people pronounce the benediction over your life. Mm -hmm. Then he'll come and say, clear. Show out. Amen. Amen. I'm going to show up. I'm going to show out. Clear the room. I said, I got the last say in your life. Amen. It don't matter what people said about you. It don't matter what your mama did to you. Amen. It don't matter what your daddy did to you. Yeah. I got so, 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 then he says in verse number five, and she brought forth a man child who was able to rule all nations. Come on, dad, she said what? With the rod of iron and yeah. her child was uh -huh. up unto God uh -huh. and to his throne. Read. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Yeah. And there was war in heaven. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought yeah. against the dragon. And the dragon fought, and his angels yeah. and prevailed not. Yeah. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. Yeah. Okay, now, here it is. I just wanted to show you where uh, Satan got, remember, he got kicked out of heaven. And I want to show you the connection between 3 and 15, when it is that uh, this woman, this woman now, is going to birth, uh, remember, it's going to be enmity between the devil and the woman. But because, why? The woman, Satan did not want the woman to birth the seed line that's going to protect, that's, that was going to produce the very Jesus that would go to the cross, that would die for our sins because he gave his blood. That makes us be able to live, move, and have our Amen. So watch this here in Genesis 3, verse number 15. Let me, let, let me go with it one more time. Uh, there. She said the one. Yeah, Genesis 3 and 15. It says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, yeah. and between thy seed and her seed. Uh -huh. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his head. Yeah. Verse 15, write this down. 
is called the proto P R O T O T O P R O T O proto evangelist proto evangelist this is the first gospel prophecy of the Bible, right here in verse number 15. Amen. This highlights Jesus as a deliverer and will come to redeem and rescue the people of God from sin. Amen. Amen. Now watch this here. Here it is. Jesus said, I mean the Bible says in verse number uh, 15, and I will put enmity between thee, Satan, and humanity, the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Now here's where it kind of gets sticky. Because enmity, I said, was conflict, feud, strife, war, or hostility. Mm -hmm. But in verse number two, I'll skip it, and, and, and then he says, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise uh, his heel. Now, there is going to be a continual conflict. There'll be enmity, and there's going to be continual conflict. Grab those two concepts. There's going to be enmity, there's going to be continual conflict. Where's the continual conflict? That's the invisible war that we fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the invisible war that we fight. That's why I go to Ephesians real quick. Go to Ephesians 6 and verse number 10. Ephesians 6 and verse number 10. See, we don't understand that we're fighting. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's a cold war, and we don't. See, if we understood, if a lot of people understood, man, I'm telling you, they was trying to set up a cot in the church. Mm -hmm. They don't want. They want. They, they want to try to get word every time, every chance they get. Amen. Because that's the only, your only defense against all of this stuff that's going on out here. Right. Is the word. Yeah. And it took Christians to believe that. Mm -hmm. Watch this here. In verse number 10. Finally, my brother, finally, my brother, be strong, be strong, be strong. Keep on being strong. Present act of possible. Be strong. Be strong now and continue to what? Be strong. And in the power, in the Lord, in the Lord, and in the power of his might. Then he said, put on the what? The whole arm of God. What's the whole arm of God? That's the word. Amen. He says, you got to put it on because you're going to fight. Armor suggests to me that I'm in a war. Amen. The Bible says, put on the whole arm of God. Why? That you may be able to what? To stand against the wiles of the Satan or the devil. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if you don't put on the whole arm, you won't stand a chance against the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because he knows your background. Mm -hmm. He knows you inside and out. Right. See, Satan has studied you since you was a, you was a little baby. Mm -hmm. And he knows what makes you mad. Mm -hmm. He knows what makes you sad. He knows what button to push. And that's what he'll arrange in your life. Mm -hmm. So how can you fight somebody who knows he has a blueprint of you somewhere and he knows what, what it is that, that, that takes you off? How can you fight somebody that that power? Amen. You can do it without the word. So then he says, for we wrestle not. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Question. Can we wrestle not against flesh and blood in this world? Mm -hmm. Why do we fight each other, especially as Christians? Mm -hmm. Why do we fight the preacher? Mm -hmm. We don't fight against the group of That ain't even our fight. Mm -hmm. We're fighting an invisible, not just that, we're fighting an invisible war. Mm -hmm. You cannot see it. If somebody grabs a 9 millimeter and then you get a 9, you can see that war because bullets are going to start flying. You can see, you can understand that war, but you don't understand. Satan is taking bullets. He's taking headshots at you. Mm -hmm. He's taking headshots at your family and he's trying to take somebody out. Mm -hmm. He says, put on the whole love of God to be able to stand in the wilds of Satan, the wilds of who will wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. What are we fighting against? Principles. Can you see a principle? No. Mm -hmm. But you can stand for one. Mm -hmm. Amen. Did you not know that you don't, when you don't stand for what's right, even when it's your family, did you not know you just lost and you serve the Satan at that point? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When somebody's doing wrong and you don't say, ha, ha, he, he, and you don't stand and say, no, that's wrong. I love you, but that's wrong. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. If you can't do that right now, he says, you, 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 you're not even worthy to be my disciple. Amen. You ain't put on the whole arm of God. Amen. You won't stand on our principle. Amen. He said that you, that he said, was, but against principalities, against what? Powers? Look, there's a hierarchy in the, 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 the Satan's kingdom. He says principles against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having all that you can do to stay. 1 John 5 and 19, real quick. 1 John 5 and 19. 1 John 5 and 19. Read that dash real quick. The Bible said, then we want that to the text. And we know that we are of God. Yeah. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. Yeah. And we know that the Son of God has come and have given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. No, all right there. Did you not know who we fight? Mm -hmm. We're fighting the world. Amen. We're fighting the world's principles. Mm -hmm. we're, 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 we're actually fighting uh, uh, the principles of the LGBT mm -hmm. who say they, who, who, you can have your own choice. See, we're fighting those principles. And see, when it is that the, 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 the church won't stand, Amen. how is the world going to stand? Right. If people that, watch this, if people that we know can go and throw it out and not come to church and not study the Bible and not do the right thing, Haman wanted to kill all of the Jews. Why? 
Because if he killed the Jews, he killed the seed line. You remember Ruth and Boaz? Yeah. See, Ruth and Boaz, everybody think that was just about a, a love story. Yeah, they had a love story to it. But watch this here. The Ruth and Boaz was about the seed line. Because out of Ruth came the seed line that Jesus would come out. I'm trying to paint a picture to you this evening that the, 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 the devil is after killing the seed line to get you the salvation. So that's why it is, that's why it is that, uh, that, 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 that he puts, that, that he put enmity between the seed and her seed. Now watch this here. Write this down. The bloodline points to the lifeline. The bloodline points to our lifeline. Because you got to remember, even before the bloodline, the, the, the genealogy started, remember, the world was so wicked. We're going to only read about it in Genesis chapter number 6. The world was so wicked, God said, I'm going to destroy this world. Uh -huh. Remember, he's destroyed the world the first time by what? Water. water. The next time he's going to destroy it by what? Fire. So watch what he did. He destroyed it by, 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 by water with the exception of eight souls. Yeah. Noah and his family were the only ones that were saved. Everybody else that laughed at him because he was doing and building an old funny looking art because he was, he was so-called wasting his time because he kept on going to Bible study because he kept on serving God and he was looking stupid in the meantime but with the same people that was talking about him start gurgling up underwater he didn't see
But he had to be born out of the right seed line. Amen. To be the savior for us. Amen. See, God had so many things. It could not be. Look here, it could have been nobody but God. All the stuff that had to go right here for, 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 for Jesus to be born, to be born of a virgin, to be going to all the seed line. It could have been nothing but God in your life. You are here right now. You could have been dead. You could have been in a car accident. You could have been messed up. You could have been crippled. But it wasn't nothing but God in your life. God preserved the seed line in your life when he could have cut to cut it off. Now watch this here. The Bible says, it shall bruise thy head and bruise his heel. Watch this here. The thing about, let me deal with the heel first. I want you to know that that heel is a topology of the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Watch this here. The heel is a minor blow, but watch this here. It's painful, temporary. It's, pain, it's a painful experience. If, any, if anybody in here has ever had an Achilles heel, that is one of the worst to snap. That is one of the, the worst pains you could ever feel in your life. Mm -hmm. Watch this here. The crucifixion. When Jesus was on the cross. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is what he was talking about. He's going to bruise his heel. Mm -hmm. Watch this here. When Jesus was on the cross. Mm -hmm. This is when his heel was bruised. The bruising of the heel is when they put him up and stretched him wide on the cross of Calvary. That's when he is the saint and his workers and the, and, and the centurion, they thought they had they was having a party. Why? For three days, they had a three day party. But on the third day, my savior got up and resurrected with all here it is when he says, He shall bruise thy what? Head. When it is that Jesus got up with all power on his, in, his, in his hand, that's when it is that he bruised Satan's head. The head represents authority. The head rep, you cannot do anything without your head. So when it is that Jesus got up, oh, I get happy. Not only did he bruise his head, but I have you to know where he died, where it is that he died at. When Jesus was, was what the cross was at, was at the place called Golgotha. Mm -hmm. oh, Golgotha is the place of the skull. Amen. The last time I checked, you check your big old head in the mirror, your skull is the thing that protects your brain or your head. In other words, Jesus died on a place where it is he died for your head so people in the devil can't get in your head no more because now God, oh Lord have heard, God now controls your head. He controls your head. Satan don't control you no more. Sin don't control you no more. Why? Because he bruised Satan's old nasty head. Amen. So what you say? Some people don't mean nothing to, but I tell you what, keep on living. Amen. Keep on living. Amen. Keep on living. You appreciate the third man that he got up and out. Keep on living. Keep on living. Keep on living, keep on living young people. You, you, you appreciate this Jesus. Amen. Watch this here. So the Bible says in verse 16. Unto the woman he says, I'm a great and multiply thy sorrow. Mm -hmm. Now watch this here. Thy sorrow and thy conception. Mm -hmm. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Mm -hmm. We're talking about consequences here because mm -hmm. now sin is a bloody business. Yeah, yeah. You gotta understand how many women in here, how many ladies in here have ever birthed a child? Mm -hmm. How many? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, some of us, some of you, 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 
my witnesses right now. Look here. When it is that you birth a child, that's a painful experience. Amen. That's a painful experience. Mm -hmm. But did you not know because of Eve, when it is that you get to Whatever you find your hand to do, do it all your might. Amen. And when you 
don't know me, if he was showing God, I don't appreciate it. Amen. You got to work it. Man, we got to work. Amen. We got to be workers. Amen. We got to work smart. Amen. We got to work smart. You got to work, first of all, you got to work with God and put him first still. And even though that we have, we are under the curse because of Adam. Now, and remember, now we're under Jesus. Now, God, remember, we can't blame Adam no more. Amen. We can't blame Adam no more. Amen. Now we got to work hard and just do what we got. See, all this practice, so we got to go out here and still make money and still, and still uh, 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 and maintain out of all these old jealous, hated people and crazy people and prejudiced people. But you still got to go out and go on your job and keep your mouth shut and be able to break up a check off so mama can keep on eating. Amen. 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 In the sweat of thy face, thou shalt eat thy bread, yeah. and thou shalt return to the ground. For out of it it was taken, the dust thou art, and to the dust thou return. And now, Adam, you were going to live forever at first. Mm -hmm. But now, because you sinned, mm -hmm. now you are going to die. Mm -hmm. And I made you out of the dirt, and to the dirt you will what? You know, mm -hmm. So watch this here. We don't want to know. The Bible says that Adam called his wife's name Eve. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Because she was the mother of all living. Mm -hmm. Notice, at first he called her woman. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now he's gave, he's given her a new name. Amen. You know what, uh, ladies? Has God given you a new name? Well, well, well. We ain't got no ladies to say amen. Now. Amen. amen. Look here. Are you just woman, mm. or are you Eve? Mm. If you just a woman, why she's here? God has not renamed you. If God has not renamed you, then if Eve was the mother of the living, what's the opposite of living? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to be the mother of dead? No, no sir. Now then, the watch is here. You got to let God, and through God's man, you got to let him rename you. Amen. Remember, he had to rename even Satan. Her name was what? Say right. You know what say right means? It means contentious. That means she argued. So it means she was disagreeable all the time. But then he changed her name to what? Say right. Which means beautiful and a whole lot of other things. Amen. See, God can change your name from contentious to something beautiful if it is to let him change your name. Amen. Watch you see verse of God 21. Unto Adam also his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Think about what's going on. Go back if you would to verse number seven. The Bible says what a uh, pattern. Mm -hmm. And the eyes of them both were open. Uh-huh. And they knew that they were naked. Yeah. And they sewed fig leaves together. Uh-huh. They made themselves aprons. Now they made them what? Who made the aprons then? Mm -hmm. They sold themselves. Mm -hmm. But when it is, they watch it here. What it is that God now has pronounced their, 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 their punishments over here, and God is so loving, and God is so graceful. Over here in verse number 21, they messed up with God, but still now, he's clothing me. He's clothing them. See, they clothe themselves. See, a lot of times, we're trying to clothe ourselves, but if we let God buy our clothes, we would look better. Amen. When we buy our clothes, we don't know how to match our color, but when God buys God don't have the outfit suited and booted up from the head to toe. Amen. He's going to be sharp, man. Amen. Why? Because God is the creator. Amen. God is the deliverer. I just see it. Close it like this here. So the Bible says, And unto Adam, he said unto his wife, Did the Lord make coats of skins? Watch this here. Don't miss this. Remember I said that sin is a bloody business. Amen. It took some Adam, probably a lamb, to die before blood. Because it is that Adam and Eve what sin. So even God had to take an innocent lamb and kill the lamb, drain the blood to clothe, oh Lord, to clothe Adam and Eve. Well, so did he, that's called substitutionary atonement. That is the 
same thing, the Lamb, which is God, which is Jesus, came and he closed us. God had to kill him and bruise him for us because we sin. Because we sin. That's why we don't keep on making a habit out of sin. That's why when it's time to repent, we repent. Why? Because man, it cost God his life. The Bible says in verse 22, and the Lord said, Behold, the man is becoming one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he, uh, lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, God said, We can't have this. He sent forth them forth out of the garden of Eden. Watch this here. They got evicted from their own house. How did they get evicted? Because yeah. sin is a bloody business. Yeah. See, watch this here. Let me share something with you. Where it is, and you were so many years that I disobeyed God, and God will have you there where you ought to be. God had me while I was living on the street. Amen. Why? Do you, do you disobey God? I'm telling you, it's going to be a bloody business. Amen. Now, notice this right here. God now has kicked him from the atmosphere of paradise. Yeah. He drove the man out the man and placed east of Eden mm -hmm. in the garden of Eden of Jericho, a flaming sword which turned every way to keep them the way of the tree of life. Mm -hmm. Now, watch what's happening here. They ate of the tree of good and knowledge, knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. But remember, how many trees was there? Two. Two trees. Mm -hmm. Now, the other tree was the tree of life. Mm -hmm. Now, they got kicked out of the place where the tree of life was. Mm -hmm. Now, God had to put angels right there with sword so yeah. nobody can eat of the tree of life because when I eat of the tree of life, I'm going to have immortality and I'm going to live forever. Yeah. 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 Go to Revelation real quick and we're done. Go to Revelation real quick. Next week, Lord willing, we're going to be on chapter number four. Go to Revelation chapter 22 and watch verse number 14. Revelation chapter number 22. Verse number 14. If you're here tonight and you're subject to the Lord's invitation, you come to the Lord by faith, repentance, confession, and baptism. The good news is that Jesus died, he was buried, and he arose the third day according to the scripture. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Amen. Amen. That's great news to us. Why? Because we're sinners. Yeah. And the power that he got up, the due to the power that God raised him up with, watch this here. He deposited in you when it is you obey the gospel. It's in you right now. God gave you the same doomless power that he raised Jesus of, the resurrection power. He gave it to you inside of you. It's called the Holy Spirit. So that's why it is that we don't keep on acting crazy because God has deposited himself in us. Amen. You are powerful people yes. because God has deposited himself in you. Revelation chapter number 22. Watch verse number 14. What just happened? They got kicked out so they would not, Sister Shirley, eat of the tree of life. Watch this here. Bless it. Are you there in 14? Amen. Bless it. Bless it. Bless it. Who wants to be blessed? Amen. Amen. Bless it. Are they? Watch this here. Where is the blessing? Bless it. Are they? It's a certain people. Bless it. Let's go slow. Bless it. Oh, Lord, have mercy. 